Hey everyone, Skull902 back here for another part of Donkey Kong Country 3. This is part 4, we're going to be going into Mechanos. Uh, the first level has my absolute favorite song in the game, Nuts and Bolts. Let's have a listen. Uh, beautiful, beautiful filler. Uh, but yeah, again, that's my favorite song in the whole game. Uh, and I did this for, um, Aquatic Ambience in, uh, DKC1 and, uh, Sticker Bush or Sticker Brush Symphony in DKC2. Uh, so, you know, I, I figured that I should do it here for, uh, Nuts and Bolts in, uh, DKC3. Again, my, uh, favorite song in the game. Fucking love it. Uh, you know, could have a whole conversation about the soundtrack, but, uh, I'll do that a little bit later, because uh, what I would like to talk about in this part is, uh, you know, uh, there's some characters here that we've seen in all three games uh, that I, I feel like I've kind of forgotten in the commentary, you know? And uh, the first of these characters uh, that I would really like to uh, get into, uh, you know, uh, their character is uh, Funky Kong. So, uh, you know, as TV Tropes would describe, uh, he is sort of the uh, gadgeteer genius of, uh, of the group. You know, he's, he's always inventing something or, uh, uh, you know, making vehicles or, or whatever. Uh, he's a, a laid-back guy, uh, likes to surf. You know, uh, I imagine that, like, he's, he's got a thing for uh, a fair few amount of sports, but uh, it seems surfing is uh, his main thing. Uh, and he likes his vehicles, you know. So it's it's perfect that he's in uh, some Mario Kart games, uh, you know. He probably likes racing the shit out of them. Uh, but uh, he's also been described as having a, a bit of a distaste for adventure, you know. He... he he would prefer to just help out from the sidelines, and you know, that's perfectly valid. Uh, Funky's just a chill dude. So I, I, I want to give him some respect. Uh, you know. He's, uh, he's one of my favorite characters in the franchise, and uh, if he's not one of yours, then... I mean, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I, I, I kid, of course, I kid, but... Um, the reason why I want to talk about these uh, characters I feel I've uh, forgotten uh, in uh, the commentary is uh, because uh, I, I wanted to look up uh, episodes of uh, the Donkey Kong Country cartoon uh, that could be considered focus episodes on them. Uh, and Funky it was a little hard. Uh, I think he only has like two episodes, much like Dixie, uh, but he has like way more of a presence in the actual show. But, uh, you know, I, I figured that I should uh, talk about Funky as well. Uh, so, uh, the episode that I have is uh, Orangutango. So, yeah. Unfortunately for Funky, though, it kind of turns from a focus episode on him to a focus episode on Donkey Kong uh, as we go along. But, you know, whatever. Uh, let, let's just uh, get into the summary. So, uh... First thing is, uh, that, like, Cranky is, uh, you know, helping, uh, Candy practice for this, uh, dance competition that's going on. And, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about it, you know, oh man, you and Funky win every year, which, uh, is, you know, could, could Funky Kong be, uh, uh, you know, stealing Donkey Kong's girl here, or, or are they just competition partners? <laughs> you know, we know that Bluster is no competition for Donkey Kong, uh, but, you know, Funky, you know, he, he could definitely steal candy. Uh, but, you know, uh, 
So they're talking about how uh, Candy and Funky always win. Bluster has no shot in the world of uh, winning the dance competition or whatever. And uh, the prize is a, uh, a wish from uh, the Crystal Coconut. So uh, while they're talking about this, K. Rule bursts in uh, and, you know, uh, he says that he's entering the competition uh, and Cranky's like, oh no. You're you're just gonna use the wish to uh, roll over Congo Bongo and whatnot, and K roll with the best response. He was like, uh, "Well, it did cross the mind." I I fucking love him. Ah, uh, goodness. But like, you know that happens, and uh, they're like, "Oh, well, you you know you got to get a dance partner." Uh, so, K. Rule's mission is now set. He's got to find the right dance partner uh, and uh, get into this competition. Meanwhile, uh, Inka Dinka Doo, basically God in uh, this cartoon, uh, has uh, summoned Donkey Kong for a mission. So, uh, he, uh, Funky, and uh, Diddy. Uh, go off uh, to uh, Inka Dinka Doo's uh, temple uh, after, uh, like, Funky uh, sings a song. I, I should mention this. Before all this happens, uh, Donkey Kong is, like, really sad about his uh, lack of dance skills. Uh, and Funky sings him a fucking amazing song about it, you know, to try and help him feel better because, you know, Funky's a bro. This Ripsaw Rage, just just as a quick aside, uh, annoying fucking level. Uh, annoying fucking level. You know, the, one of the very few auto-scrollers in uh, this NES trilogy, and Jesus fucking Christ. Very annoying to have to deal with, but uh, in this episode here, uh, uh, they, they go off to uh, Inka Dinka Doo's uh, temple to uh, see what's up. Meanwhile, K. Rule, uh, with his uh, search for a dance partner, uh, he rules out Clump, uh, which I, I feel is very unfair because, uh, you know, aside from Funky, uh, Clump has easily the best dance in the whole episode. But unfortunately, uh, Clump is uh, just constantly rejected. And instead, uh, K. Rule chooses Crusha as his dance partner. Uh, now, Crusha has to do some learning. Uh, because, like, when he tries to dance, uh, most of the time he, he's just stomping around. So, uh, you know, K. Rule's gotta teach him. Uh, and uh, while that's going on, DK, Diddy, and uh, Funky are, are in the temple of uh, Inka Dinka Doo. Where, uh, you know, uh, the, the god, again, because that's basically what he is, uh, tells Donkey Kong that he's got to go through, like, uh, the three rooms of doom uh, in order to save Congo Bongo. As a test, I, I suppose, but uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. So, Donkey Kong, uh, you know, he's going through the first hallway, uh you know, the first room, uh, and, uh, then all these, uh, spears start jutting up at him and, uh, you know, making him go crazy. Uh, and Funky and Diddy lend their support, uh, telling Donkey Kong to, like, bust out the moves and everything. Uh, and it, it helps him along, uh, in, in the temple. It helps him in the first room. Uh, and just before the second room, uh, Funky, again, he's such a bro. Uh, he's, he's like, you know, there's three of us, uh, why don't we take turns doing the, doing the trials, but unfortunately this is just for Donkey Kong. He makes it through the second room, uh, again, uh, you know, just doing some, uh, dance moves. Makes it through the third room doing the exact same thing. And, uh, so, like... When they come back, they're like, all right, so, uh, what exactly was the point of all that? Uh, and Inka Dinka Doo, uh, he, he knows what's up. He, he just basically tells them that they'll know in time. 
Funky celebrates this, but then unfortunately uh, hurts his leg. Uh, so he is no longer viable for the dance competition. Uh, which means, um, like, af after all the training, uh, when K. Rule has uh, Crusha all, all nice and good for the competition, uh, that they're the only ones. Apparently, Bluster didn't even enter. He must have gotten word that they were making fun of him. <laughs> and uh, then got so self-conscious about it that uh, he decided not to uh, show up. So that's unfortunate for Bluster, but uh, even more unfortunate for uh, the entirety of Congo Bongo, because now, now it's only K. Rule. Until Donkey Kong and Diddy come in for the save, uh, Donkey Kong offers uh, his uh, support uh, to Candy by uh, saying that he'll be her dance partner. Uh, but they got some stiff competition. Because uh, K. Rule and, and Crusha do an, an incredible routine, let me tell you. And uh, apparently it's, it's uh, the audience that decides who the winner is. Uh, and the audience, which is conspicuously full of critters, are enamored. Uh, they, they love the performance. You know, uh, so... Donkey and uh, Candy, uh, they gotta, they gotta really step their game up. But unfortunately, they're unable to do so because Donkey Kong is just bad at dancing. So you know, it it seems like uh, the the competition's fucked. But then, uh, you know, through the power of cheating, uh, Donkey Kong gets a second chance. Uh, through uh, a song of his own. So, you know, the last episode I recapped, it was Cranky, who is, you know, for what it's worth, a, a good singer. Uh, and Diddy, who uh, is easily the worst of, uh, of the cast in, in terms of singing. Uh, and then uh, in this episode, we get uh, Funky, who's great, and Donkey Kong, who is even greater, uh, getting a song. So uh, that, that's beautiful. I absolutely love it. So, you know, uh, they do the dance, and uh, it's all, you know, happy-go-lucky, hooray, we, we did it. Uh, but then uh, Clump announces that the audience actually uh, <laughs> liked uh, K. Rule and uh, uh, Crusha better, so they win. Now, the important thing to note uh, is that during the entire episode... Crusha has been doing, or I'm sorry, no, Clump has been doing uh, his, uh, you know, amazing dance uh, for his boss, you know, this whole time, and every time uh, that he does it, uh, K. Rule is, uh, you know, he's being a very unappreciative bastard, you know, he's like, I wish you wouldn't do that, you know. Uh, so, after uh, K. Rule and uh, Crusha are announced as the winners, of this competition, uh, you know, Clump just wanted to show his general support by doing the same dance for them in congratulations, you know, in, in support. Uh, he was happy to see his boss win. Uh, but again, uh, K. Rule, uh, completely unappreciative, screams that he wished that uh, Clump wouldn't do that. But, uh oh, you know what the prize was? It was a wish from the Crystal Coconut, and uh, K. Rule just fucking wasted it. So, not only has K. Rule ruined uh, Clump's chances at a, uh, a competitive dancing career, which I feel is very unfortunate. You know, uh, but he's also fucked himself over uh, in terms of taking over Congo Bongo, because now... Now, uh, you know... Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't get his wish of uh, of taking the island. So uh, bad day for K. Rule overall. But uh, I, I'm gonna say that he deserved it for being uh, very, very mean to uh, to Clump when all all that he wanted to do was uh, show some support. You know. Uh, so again, uh, he deserved it, uh, and Congo Bongo is safe. Donkey Kong realizes that uh, that's. Uh, what Inka Dinka do was uh, intending this whole time was to uh, teach him how to dance. 
Uh, so they celebrate with a dance until uh, Donkey Kong stomps on uh, on Candy's foot and uh, ruins the entire moment. And that's the episode of Rangatango. Uh, again, like it, it starts where like basically uh, everybody is talking about this dance and and saying, "Oh man, Funky, you're our only hope." And then it turns into a Donkey Kong episode instead. So my man Funky, uh, he got completely fucked out of a focus episode, but uh, you know, uh, I I'm sure that he's chill about sharing. Uh, sharing is caring, after all. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I th I thought that it was good fun. Uh, it's it's uh, one of the episodes I, I think that uh, uh, I uh, would put in like my top ten uh, of Donkey Kong Country episodes. Uh, again, uh, just just some good nice fun. Uh, it was nice to see uh, Crusha uh, get into the dance competition as well and and everything. Good stuff. Though uh, he was kind of being forced by K. Rule to do it. Speaking of K. Rule, uh, I completely fucking forgot uh, to mention this uh, in the ending of uh, the previous episode uh, that I recapped, uh, Ape Fu Young. Like, K. Rule is uh, very sad because uh, part of, like, the reason why, uh, like, uh, he and, and Cranky uh, were at uh, Cranky's place anyway uh, with their crystal coconut was uh, because Cranky like made them a promise uh, to uh, you know uh, give them the coconut in exchange for uh, his freedom after his initial offer of the uh, uh, potion uh, the aging potion was uh, denied so uh, like at the very end of the episode uh, K. Rule reveals that they stole the potion uh, and decides to take a drink. Like, they know exactly what it is, so it's not like K. Rule uh, doesn't know what he's getting into. Like, uh, but then, he, you know, it's implied that he turned into a baby, but, you know, it's the same deal with the fucking vacuum. Uh, <laughs> and I fucking love this. Uh, he drinks it, and uh, then the potion goes off. Uh, his crown falls onto the chair. Uh, and then you see him with his adult model, with the crown still on, so there's like a mini crown now on his head. Uh, you know, uh, wishing that he had his mommy. Uh, so like, again, it's it's just a case of like, come on guys, you, you, you wrote something, uh, you, you should have accounted for the budget when you were doing this. But uh, yeah. Uh, that's the note about that episode I forgot to go on, and uh, then aside from that, uh, was a, a nice little recap of uh, Orangutango. And that takes us to this boss. Uh, this is Chaos, uh, who is being presented to us as the new enemy uh, here, you know. Uh, K. Rule, hmm, you know, <laughs> nowhere to be seen. Uh, clearly, it's just Chaos. Uh, so. Uh, this is one of my favorite boss fights in the game. Uh, you know, one of, one of only a couple that I like really like. With uh, this this first phase here, uh, he looks like the Android logo. Uh, you know, many years before Android came about. Um, but there's a few cycles of this where uh, you know he's gonna uh, burst his uh, little jet down on the floor at you, uh, and you gotta you know run underneath. Uh, and then uh, the the swinging blades come out. You got to jump up and hit him in the head. Then eventually, uh, after a few hits that way, he's gonna uh, pop out this second head that looks like uh, Vinny from Spaceballs. And uh, the original android head is gonna shoot this laser at you. So again, you, you got to avoid the uh, the fire and uh, now the uh, lasers. in order to, uh, you know, get a chance at uh, hopping up the uh, the blades to hit him. So I, I think that this is going to be the uh, last uh, couple of hits. Oh, okay, it was the last one. Cool. I don't have to explain much further. Uh, I don't know if this is a suicide attack, but I treat it as, a, uh, as if it is. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to stay clear of the explosion. 
Uh, and there we go. Uh, another item. Uh, it's two skis. So, let us uh, go on back to uh, Funky in, uh, in the overworld here and uh, see if uh, we can perhaps use those like we used the uh, bandage, you know, uh, last time. So, hey, what do you know? Uh, two skis, he can do something with them. Uh, and indeed, with, uh, with some handy dandy work, we get the turbo ski, uh, which will allow us to go up waterfalls now. Uh, so, uh, that's, that's pretty nice, pretty cool. Thank you, Funky. You're a bro, uh, as previously mentioned. Now then, let's go into the save cave and, uh, hear another little, uh, nice bit of music. Indeed, uh, it was Peach's Castle theme from Super Mario 64. Wrinkly has an N64 in uh, the save cave and uh, likes to play it every now and then. So uh, I, I thought that that was like a nice little touch uh, that they put in the game. But uh, yeah, that'll just about do it for part four. In the next part, we're going to be going to K3. So I'll see you there. I have been Skull902. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day.